Greetings, everyone. Greetings. This is Danielle X with National Network View. Today, we have the honor of interviewing Dr. Pamela Grayson. Um, and we're going to have a conversation on the missing of black children and, of course, human and sex trafficking as well. They will be uh, joining us here shortly, so you all be patient with me as she comes on. Thank you. I see you. I see you. Yes, ma'am. Give me a second. There you are. Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Get this thing started here shortly. Hold on one second, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma there we go. Yes, ma'am. Thank you all for joining in to National Network View. I have the privilege and honor of being able to have this interview slash conversation with an amazing woman. She works very hard, you all, in the community to bring awareness to many topics. Um, I had the privilege and honor of working with her on a panel as we discussed sex trafficking, uh, deportation, um, immigrants coming from different countries here legally try or illegally, trying to work on becoming legal, the tough battles even in that um, kidnapping, human trafficking, uh, how it's happening a lot in the um, Texas borders and um, throughout the mm -hmm. world. So I want to be able to introduce you all to Dr. Pamela Grayson. Greetings, ma'am. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I appreciate this opportunity. Yes, it's been a pleasure working with my sister as well on this very topic. Yes. Um, it, it, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Um, just the other day, I saw a posting where a young lady I apparently worked at it. It was either at a store or a restaurant. She was fifteen, uh -huh. and they she left out of the back door to go see somebody in a dark vehicle wow. with tinted window, uh -huh. and has not been heard from since. Wow! And what's her name? So, Do you have her name? I. I do I do I do let me find that for you but yes I do have her name but right. the uh focus for me was on the uh the officer mm -hmm. a detective white oh. that is handling the case and see the frustration is how DPD handles cases mm -hmm. like this yes ma'am um, let me this see happened. I'm gonna pull in Dallas was right it in Fort Worth what, what county was this in Oh, goodness. It's in Alexis Cavazos. Hmm. And it is in Dallas, from what I understand. They said she is Hispanic, 16 years old, 5'9", 150 pounds. And then they said, basically, yes, she uh, went out to someone's car. She left all of her ID and her cash and, and money in the in the restaurant or wherever the place she worked. And she's not been seen since. Wow. Man. For so, those just not joining... Uh-huh. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying those who are just not joining in, I have the privilege and honor of having Dr. Uh, Pamela Grayson here with us. And she's giving us some live information, you all, on this topic that we're discussing, missing children, missing people, and of course, human and sex trafficking. And she's giving us an update of what she's seen, 
what she experienced, and what she's dealing with right now in the community with the person who is missing in the Dallas area. So, Pamela, go ahead. And, and then you know, there was a big to do about the young lady that came from California as well, mm -hmm. and they say he she was a gentleman, and we've not heard from her either. Mm -hmm. Um, th 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 there's two points I want us to look at okay. from this situation. Okay. All situations. One. So I called the detective at TPD. Uh -huh. I said, do you all have any actual stats for what you're dealing with here in Dallas in regards to uh, sex trafficking? Uh -huh. I didn't get the detective. I got, you know, whoever, their first line of defense who answers the phones. Uh -huh. This gentleman, for lack of a better word, was nothing short of embarrassingly ignorant. Wow. He was horrible. I explained who I am. DPD knows me well. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I say what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you. Wow. And his comment was, well, the detective doesn't really handle sex trafficking. He handles missing persons. I said, yes, but we're pretty, you know, that's a strong possibility. This is what has happened to this young lady. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, do you all have any information? Any statistics as to what is going on in Dallas with sex trafficking? His comment was, I don't keep that information. <laughs> I didn't ask if you did. I said Dallas Police Department because this is a significant issue in academic here in Dallas. Because Dallas, Texas is the second in the nation. Yes, ma'am. For second yes, ma sex trafficking. You ought to have a handle on it. Mm -hmm. And so again, I said, well, do you have any information? Do you have any literature? Do you have any, you know, anything you, you, you provide? Mm -hmm. And again, he says, <laughs> I don't keep that information. At this point, I'm getting frustrated, and I start giggling to keep from cussing. Yes, ma'am. Referred me to somebody. Well, he's a sergeant over there. He, he may be able to tell you what's going on. Okay. So that's where Dallas Police Department is. In regards, you just got a new police chief mm -hmm. who said what he needed to say to get the job. Yes. And now has done a Yes. This man did a smooth 180. Yes. He does not care about people of color. Wow. Even though he is one. Mm -hmm. Supposedly. Yes, ma'am. All right. So now, that's one aspect. Mm -hmm. If we're going to address the epidemic for our community, it's on us. Yes, ma'am. And so... Now, my other point that I want to make, mm -hmm. we have to look at the reason mm -hmm. these girls tell themselves. Now, not saying that all of them do, mm -hmm. but some of them are sneaking out the house, oh, yes, meeting these people on the internet. We got to figure out why these people can appeal to our children mm -hmm. and get away from us. Yes, ma'am. And I, I want to ask you that, Dr. Pamela, and that's one of my questions I want to ask you about social media. You know, now that we're sheltering in place, right, now we're in the privacy of our own homes or should be anyway, and so our children are having more time on their hands. I see your son. Mm -hmm. He's in every <laughs> video I think I've ever made. He, he in the he won't let me be <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yes, ma'am. But I want to be able to address that in saying that we have to. What can we do as parents? We see our children on social media. We see them doing things on all platforms. They have these hidden apps on their phones that we don't know exactly what it might be, and they're in their beds chilling, minding their own business. But mommy and daddy are doing the same thing. So our children are warped into this world of social media. Mm -hmm. So what do we as parents to help stop the bleeding of this epidemic? What should we do to be able to help stop this from growing so rapidly? You real loud. Okay. We... we... Mm -hmm. That one that just left the room is eight. Yes, ma'am. And has figured out how to backdoor on his online school and talk to his classmates. Yes, ma'am. And the teacher doesn't even. Yes. Eight. And I'm getting ready to stitch because I'm like, they're having entire conversations and you don't even know what's going on until something pops up and check. Yes, ma'am. Because I walk in and he's having a whole conversation. You're supposed to be in class. Hmm. So I, we want them to have the technology because the reality of it is 
my son needs to be able to operate in technology because it's going to be required later. Mm -hmm. And when he hits the real world, that's where the operations are. Absolutely. He's got to be able to. Yes, ma'am. But we have to have it locked down so tough. And and I, to my understanding, we may have to switch to iPhones because you may, you can control those a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I can see apps. I can see everything downloaded. I want to be in a position where I can see the text, mm -hmm. everything. Yes, ma'am. You have to be in everything. Mm -hmm. And it is not a matter of saying, well, I choose to trust my child. Your child may not be the issue. Hmm. It's somebody else that. that you can't trust. Yes, ma'am. You, you, you have to have the social media locked down. I know with my oldest child, when until he came of age, I had access to his Facebook. I had to pay his work. And I could see everything. Yeah. And and that's just the way you're going to have to be. If you're going to give them access to it. Yes, ma'am. Don't need to lock it down because the problem is it's in, in your child, it may be a good child and trustworthy. But you're opening up to a world of people that will infiltrate that world and they'll twist your child. Because I remember being a teenager and my mom saying, Pam, don't do this. You don't want them to think this about you. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, hang out with so don't do this with boys. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking like, first of all, I'm not doing it. You don't know what you're talking about anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, to an extent, she did. Yes, ma'am. But at that time, you couldn't tell me. But look, in that, so, Dr. Pamela, look, but listen to those children who are getting multiple accounts. Because you may have the password to one, but they having a full-blown conversation with, with Timmy and them on the other side, and they lured into this human and sex trafficking world, or even just, you know, being exposed. Children nowadays are being exposed to porno. You know, things are being different. We didn't have this access to be able to see these things, but now they have plethora of opportunity to be sucked into a whole bunch of things and then meet a person that you didn't even know. So are you looking at their accounts? Oh, she good. Oh, he good. Going to their history, going to that. But they had a full-blown conversation with a grown man who said he was 16, 14, or 10, and they're meeting them, and then they're gone. Exactly. Man. You know, when it comes to the social media thing, I, I I don't know. Like I said, unless the phones now will tell all of the accounts that are on the phone, you just going to have to run through their phone every now and yes. again. Yes, ma'am. You're going to have to take it from them, pick it up, and run through it. Yes, ma'am. And I hate that. Yes, ma'am. Because you can't trust child, but it's not a matter of me not trusting my child. I don't trust them the other people that mm -hmm. potentially will have access to my child mm -hmm. through social media. Yes, ma'am. So when we, and, talk, and that, we talked about mm -hmm. missing children, and our, me and you had a panel, and some other awesome guests had a panel on missing children. Now, Texas notifications are coming out with the updates as of from between January um, 1st of 2021. So right now, it's over 2,000 children missing. And that number is black children, okay? Now, knowing that, do you believe that that's linking into the human and sex trafficking world? They're looking at them as just runaways. They're not happy at home. They're not liking their parents. Um, they want to be grown. Because 24 hours has gone by, right? By law, you have to give it 24 hours before you can report a child missing. So they have this label as runaways. Oh, that's a runaway. But well, do you believe that any of that has any involvement with human and sex trafficking? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm grown and you get men from other cultures that are fascinated with the black woman. Hmm. Oh, yes. And then a young black woman? Now, y'all, you all know Tanya Stafford, I believe her name is. Mm -hmm. I just read about her. You see what she went through? Yes, ma'am. Mother sold her for drugs. We have a tendency to live in, uh, in neighborhoods that aren't as flourishing. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a bleak outcome. And the right person can come along and promise us the sun, moon, and stars. And again, as younger 
women, we go for it. We go, we go for the okie doke. And there it is. Yes, they they promise a bright, bright future. Huh. I'm going to do this. And unfortunately, we also are generations that are enamored with things. Yes, ma'am. Brand name things. Yes, ma'am. Dolce and Gabbana. And they don't care about you. No, ma'am. And see, that, and I hate to say it, but it takes us back to all the things that are wrong in our society, in our culture, that if we address those, see, the, the, the children getting caught into the sex trafficking is a symptom. Yes, ma'am. Of another root cause. It's another symptom of another root cause or statistic or issue within the community. Yes, ma'am. That results in children getting out here and getting snatched. Wow. And that's where we need to focus. Fix this. Um, when I was coming up, I, I didn't believe, you know, really didn't have a lot of exposure to it, but now I believe in it. These little debutante programs that teach our young girls to be ladies, uh, teach them their self-worth, their self-affirmation. Hmm. I, I did it as an adult. Where I lived, I, it was a very rural area. We didn't have anything like that. But as an adult, I got access to one through my church, and so I did it there. Hmm. And I loved it. But we need to teach and another thing, it matters when the father doesn't have to be in the home, mm -hmm. but at least be active in their lives. Mm -hmm. Because as an adult, I can honestly say, if you're coming to approach me with relationship goals, I compare you to the man that raised me and all the sacrifices made there. And if you don't match up, it's probably not going to work because I have a standard. Yes, ma'am. A standard that I was taught was worthy of me. Yes, ma'am. And it has to meet that standard. Wow. And so, and so, so by, you, by you mentioning that standard, so a lot of times these girls and boys get that clear that boys are being snatched as well, right? So mm -hmm. in that you have a girl who you mentioned about the father not being physically in the same home, but co-parenting somewhere else and being involved. But then you have those brothers who don't interact with the girls or don't interact with their sons. And so at that point, what standard is there? So when that person walks up to them, who's a pimp and is saying everything right and exact, and all of a sudden she's wooed in because you mentioned the, the uh, mm -hmm. Dosi and Gabbana. You mentioned the, the hair getting done and nails getting done before. And so she, now she's looking at a man that she has not had in her life. And this man's coming, smelling good, hair cut, nice car, not knowing that she's going in for a rude awakening. So how can we mm -hmm. be able to, how can we um, uh, cater to those girls who don't have no male figure in their life? What do we do? That's what I was saying, the debutante program. Okay. We as a community need to provide these mentorship programs. A young lady uh, spoke to me last, I, I did a radio show Monday night, and we talked about this. We've got buildings all in our community. I'm in yes. South Dallas, mm -hmm. right up the street. A building that was once upon a time a community center, mm -hmm. but when the owners of it passed away, they let the community center go. Mm. Bring it back up. Yes, ma'am. Put it back in mentoring, uh, mentorship. My church has something for black males called DIOP, and I don't know what the acronym stands for. But at any rate, I see them diligently working with these young boys and teaching them what it is to be a man. And now I'm going to tell you, uh, the, the young boys get sucked in because unfortunately, society, mm -hmm. rap music, yes. culture, fashion, style has all taught them that having sex with a bunch of women is manly. Yes. That's who being a man. Yes. We need to stop it. Yes. Now while and you know and, and and I know that you follow the Quran. I follow the Bible. Uh but it does indicate that we are not to have sex until we're married. Yes ma'am. Ain't gonna lie. Yes, I blew that out the wall. That ain't what I did. Yes but I, I would I would go back to teaching it. To teach that today, you almost sound occultish. Hmm. It's, it's almost... But if that was how it was done, 
a lot of that wouldn't go that way. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. If you could tell people that your worth is not in your mm -hmm. performance sexually, Man. then they wouldn't get caught up in some of these things. The boys especially, because we teach them, you know, hey, go get that, man. Go smash that. Go hit that. Hit it and quit it. Mm -hmm. Whatever they do. We've taught them that this gives them validity. Mm -hmm. And that's, we need to fix that. What gives you validity? Yes, ma'am. Your character, your intelligence, the intangible character traits mm. that are positive and valuable. That's what we need to go back to teaching them. So now when little Miss Thang comes and tells them, hey, follow me, mm. they won't follow her and then hopefully not end up in sex traffic. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma'am. So our involvement has to be more from what I'm getting, what you're saying, we have to as parents and even those youth who want to be involved in helping to stop the bleeding of this epidemic that's going on and missing children. And again, I always say, Dr. Uh, Grayson, see something, say something. You know it's something, insane. it's your right to be able to bring that person out of it, even though the fear factor may be there, it may be a little uncomfortable because we know for not wanting to snitch on nobody. I don't want to snitch. A snitch is someone who is looking for something to gain. That's what a snitch is. You're gaining something from snitching. Tell them on somebody, tell. I see my cousin be snatched by so-and-so or whomever it may be so we can help that person get out of a world they cannot control. Now, I want to be able to highlight Dr. Grayson made a key component statement. There's a lot of buildings in our communities. A lot of people who have wonderful ideas from all walks of life. Let's find a way to merge these ideas, to patrol our own communities. The dope houses, mm -hmm. shut them down. Prostitution rings, shut them down. We have to stop being so comfortable and not, they ain't got nothing to do with me. Say, say something. Because as long as we have them in our communities, we're going to continuously go through the same cycle of a headache. And our children are being exposed to so much. Dr. Grayson, you made a key point in that. And I thank you for sharing that with us because it helped my, my mind is thinking for you and I personally to be able to proceed with our growth and being able to merge and make this thing happen in Dallas on a whole different level. Um, but in that, you have children, um, wonderful children, and you've been doing so much in the community and with the churches. What advice do you have with for us. every woman that's watching? Every woman that's watching, if anyone has questions, go ahead and post your comments and questions in the, in the comment area so we can go ahead and get those questions answered for you on this topic. Missing children, human and sex trafficking, and what are the solutions? The Honorable Minister Luz Farrakhan structured the FOI training for manhood for young men. And we have an MGT class for young girls to be able to learn proper etiquette, proper ways, proper stancing, sitting, eating. No means no. Being able to control self. Learn who you are. So in that, what can we do as parents to help our children to not be so, I would say, weak? What can we do to help our children to understand the self-value? The love of self, that's what's missing. Our children are caught up, like you say, with the radio, being this and being that. So what do we need to implement ASAP to help that? I'm stepping out of my office because I'm going to show y'all something. Yes, ma'am. Everybody look. This is my son's door. Yes. There was a program, uh, a thing I said for the month of February up until the 14th. Put a heart on the door mm -hmm. and tell, tell him every day what you love about him. Wow. So I have done that. I'm a couple of days behind. I love you because you're so smart. Mm -hmm. I love you because I enjoy your love of sports. It's a fight around here over some Lakers. I love your personality. I love you because you are one of my greatest gifts from God. Wow. While... You, you, people don't think those things are big. Now, the first time, the first sign I put up, he looked at me and said, uh, what you doing putting that up in my room? The next day, 
he came in my office and got the tape himself and put it out. Wow. And so those little things like that, I, I have to keep in my mind, because I'm going to tell you now, let's be transparent. Yes. For those of us raised by the previous generations, yes. a lot of times that wasn't nice. Hmm. It was bullying. Yes, ma'am. It was belittling. Public degradation. All of that. Yes, ma'am. I'm not doing that. Because I believe that the voice I use with my child is the voice that will, he will use for himself. Yes, ma'am. And if I'm constantly degrading and, and belittling, that's what he is going to do to himself. So I, I try to watch what I say. Now, sometimes he's off the chain and he catches something. Mm -hmm. But I try to watch what I say. Try to put positivity in, in him so he can see on those hearts. Um, like, we'll have a bad day. I will have fuss because he's not doing his schoolwork. But then I, I reel it back in and remind him why I'm fussing. Yes, ma'am. I don't like to fuss. But there are some things that you need to do right. But I need you to know I'm doing it because I love you and hear me when I say mm -hmm. that I do. Yes, ma'am. Um, so we need to make sure, again, if they're getting the attention and the affection at home, it won't look so appealing out there. Yes, ma'am. That's right. You're right. You're absolutely right. And, uh, what's your opinion or outlook on the importance of our children learning self-defense? Absolutely. And that was what I was going to say. I commend y'all. Dallas Vanguard is on it. <laughs> they do the self Bed. Yes, ma'am. And, and, and like I said, I want it after the pandemic because we need to do the be there physically. We're not going to do well over line. Yes, ma'am. Over online. That's, I know that's mine and his learning. It's not going to go well online. But when it comes back physically, oh, yes, mm -hmm. we will be there. Yes, that is important because the little girl that got in the car could have fought him off if she knew some technique. That's right. That's right. And, that, and, and, and the and young we lady. Think, we think about, too, because a lot of times, like you mentioned a minute ago about our upbringing. So if you have a person who's being beat at home by their father or mother or whomever's raising them, and so when a man comes and grabs you, choking you, and says to your ear, get in the car, I'm going to kill you. Your first reaction is going to be oh, survival. So you're going to do everything possible to be in obedience to that person who's choking you and grabbing you so your life won't get lost, you think, Right? Not knowing what you're about to go through in a minute is going to be <laughs> absolutely amazing. And my teacher, Grandmaster Abdul Aziz, says clearly, you rather die there than to get in that car and go through all that pain and confusion and probably die anyway. Because no one wants mm -hmm. to be raped and molested and touched and fondled with and sold by multiple men and being transferred from city to city for you know, nickels and dimes. And you're losing yourself slowly but surely. So if you're ever grabbed family in a parking lot or in your in front of your house or at work, wherever you may be, you have to be able to give it your all, protecting yourself. No one has the right to touch you. It's clear nobody has the right to touch you. So if someone happens to come and grab you, self-defense is key to be able to get the basic things. Your goal is to deaden the or kill the idea, the idea of a threat mm -hmm. to be able to get away because your goal is to go home. So whatever it takes for you to do, gash the eyes, break the nose, hit the throat, hit the stomach, hit the groin area, twist the arm, whatever it takes. But you gash it. Don't just do it because you saw mm -hmm. the movie. But you actually got to put your fingers through the eyes. You want to kill the thought in the vision at the same time. And your goal is to run away. So self-defense Something is better than nothing. And, and do it with confidence, exactly. right? Dr. Grayson, it was a, a situation that happened in Dallas recently where a young lady went into Kroger and she was coming out of Kroger and the guy asked her if she had some money. She said no, but she's walking really, really fast. He came behind her and choked her. And he told her to, to um, guide me to your car. Choking her. People in the parking lot ain't said nothing. Walking her 
to the car. She got in the passenger seat. He got in the driver's seat. She was able to get out of that, but she was molested multiple days by multiple men. So my question to you is, after going through something like that, what can we do to help these women heal from some trauma? That's traumatic. That's life-changing because you can't wash that off. You can't soak in a tub and be able to wash it away. What can we do to help these women and men get past that? And, and that is something that I, I see definitely with collective activism. That is something we work on because you are going to need counseling. I want to back up to one other thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's your question, but I just want to back up to okay. protections. Mm -hmm. Y'all know we live in Texas. Mm -hmm. Learn how to use your gun. Yes, ma'am. Get a gun and learn how to use it. Yes, ma'am. License properly. Know the law. Because... Some people you are not going to be able to fight off if there's more than one. And a lot of times, if you just brandish it, now be prepared. If don't brandish it incorrectly, because that is a felony in Texas. But if you brandish it because you're, you genuinely fear for your life, keywords, I fear for my life. Yes, ma'am. Then you do that. Yes, ma'am. And, and you see, every fight, if I'm roll, you know, if I'm somebody that is in a wheelchair, let's mm -hmm. say, I, I'm going to need alternative. Uh, method. Yes, ma'am. I'm not saying you know everybody go out and get a gun, but if you got one or you you are okay with using one, just know what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. But you keep it. Um, now going forward, what do you do after you have sustained injury? Mm -hmm. Um, obviously you're gonna do what you need to do to get physically be what better. You need to renew your mental, spiritual, and emotional. Selves. You do what you've got to do to do that. If that means taking a vacation or taking a trip, just getting away from society for a minute, you do what you need to do to heal. Mm -hmm. Nobody can determine your method of healing. That's your right. healing is yours. That's so right. if it takes a day, if it takes 10 days, if it takes a year, as long as your, prostrate, your process is continuous, yes, you do it how you need. Yes, um. So there are all kind of counseling situations. And another thing we would need you to do is you got to testify. You, you've got to tell what happened to you. Mm -hmm. We've got to help in the prosecution of that person. Yes, ma'am. And we know that hard because it's hard to go ahead and have to relive all of that. But I would ask that you consider you reliving it instead of somebody else having to actually live it all over again or live it in person, if we can stop that person there. And that, to me, hopefully will bring a sense of closure to the victim as well. Yes, ma'am. But you're going to get counseling and too many churches around here get counseling. You have any kind of health insurance, you can get counseling. You, there's also victim services yes, here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that Fort Worth has it too. And, and in actuality, too many people um, would help you. If it's, you know, I know with the churches, they typically ask for a donation of $25. You don't necessarily have to give that $25. Yes, and I know my church provides counseling. Um, I know a few of the other churches around here provide mm -hmm. counseling as well. Um, get a good healing circle. Yes, ma'am. Get some sisters or brothers that can relate. Uh, the other week, was the last week sometime, because I'm also, I'm a domestic violence survivor and Somebody did some foolishness and it triggered a whole lot for those of us that have gone through that. Um, it means something to talk to somebody who, even if they didn't experience it, can empathize, mm -hmm. give you that level of healing safety, a healing circle. I highly recommend those. And of course, you want a healing circle that doesn't repeat everything. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And a serve in someone's healing circle. Don't tell their business. But that's it. And we've got to do this. Um, we were talking about the police. I'm done. I, I, my faith is shot in, in law enforcement mm -hmm. systems at this point in time. You've got to look at Brianna. And then you've got to uh, look at what's going on here in Dallas. I, I'm personally reading a book. 
to figure out how we can come up with a statistically based emergency response system mm -hmm. for us. Yes, ma'am. Amber alerts. I, I'm yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that mm -hmm. own alert system. If we have a mental health crisis, stop calling the police. Conflict. It doesn't go conflict well. Conflict resolution. Yes, ma'am. Our own. Yes, ma'am. Our own. Mm -hmm. And I'm a certified mental health first responder. Yes. So that is my goal. It, it The law enforcement is like bleach. Huh. Works well for whites, but not for color. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. You hit the nail. And we definitely have to connect with that because the 10,000 fearless first responders and, of course, the Nation of Islam, we have a, we have a conflict resolution team, actually. And then I also have a, um, a group of people that go in the community dealing with gangbanging-related issues, domestic violence issues, the silent crimes that I found. I started out um, silent crimes with a Z. Um, that organization we're building with dealing with human trafficking, sex trafficking victim, mm -hmm. housing, um, and then have someone to talk to, be able to, you know, have a conversation with and listen. We some so much of the times we have so much to say, us. And then when someone comes to you and they're opening up about what has happened to them, we want to incorporate what we've gone through. No, just listen. They want to be heard by mm -hmm. someone because they've been through something that you can't even fathom in your mind. And so, and you may even be a victim yourself, but everyone's story is different. Every situation is different. And so we have to learn to listen. So key, conflict resolution, patrolling our own communities, and then 10,000 Fearless is definitely on, boots are on the ground. And then also with the silent crimes, we got to merge together with your organization to be able to make some move, big moves. Not talking, mm -hmm. the motion to make some stuff happen because it's growing mm -hmm. overnight. And I want to uh, make a key statement too before we close out. Um, about the self-defense. Those who are not comfortable with uh, weapons training um, or dealing with weapons, everybody's not comfortable with it quite, you know. And with that being taught and trained not to carry as much as a pen knife, you know, these hands are weapons. Now, you don't want to get close. Sometimes you want to be able to have that far away thing to where you can range and, and shoot. But get guaranteed training to be able to take the weapon away <laughs> and being able to handle yourself to prevent from being shot. He got a gun, she got a gun. Be able to deal with that. Take their gun and use it on them, on them in the proper manner with probable cause, of course. But that too is very important for those who are, because everyone's not comfortable with even hearing the gun because it's loud. It's mm -hmm. very loud. It can deaden your hearing. Um, so that too, I want to be able to say for those who ain't there yet or who never will be, definitely know that training in all areas, self-defense, weapon training, um, it's a lot of different options to be able to get someone off of you. But again, we want to be mm -hmm. able to cover all territorial areas to be able to make sure that you're safe in whatever manner it may be. But I want to go back to the question, our last question, Dr. Grayson, about parents. Now, we, we have a heavy responsibility. The children are Ooh. our future, we say. The youth are our future, we say. But what can we do? Seriously do. Put them in programs, you know, have conversations with them more often, be more involved in their football practicing, because sex trafficking is happening at football practice. It's happening at track practice. It's happening at soccer practice. It's happening at piano lessons, right? These things are happening while you're in the car waiting for your child to get done with their lessons. Your child's being right in the building. Not saying all, but it's happening. So with that, what do we need to do to cut the missing report out? And definitely with the missing reports, go over to the sex and human trafficking. What must we do at this point right now? And I look at, uh, my children are 18 years apart. Okay. I have one that's up to 30, and then there's the eight-year-old running around this house. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> the parent I was then is not the parent I am today. Yes, ma'am. I didn't know anything then. I raised the way I was raised 
which was our whoop your tail now, and I will ask you questions later. Yes, ma'am. You're going to respect me. And the, literally, the term was respect me or die. Hmm. That was your choice. Mm -hmm. And today, I can say that was wrong. Wow. I was wrong. But again, we were raised around, I raised that child around my parents, mm -hmm. and they were influencing and undermining and so mm -hmm. forth. That is not the case today. Your child is a human that has feelings, uh, emotions, goes through changes, yes, um, and differences. You know, where the child today may genuinely have ADHD or uh, some kind of other, you know, it could be a mental imbalance. Back then, we just considered them bad. And we thought we could whoop them into shape. Yes, ma'am. We don't do that. We have to look at the humanity of our children. Yes, ma'am. You have to be on tap when that attitude changes. Yes. You have to be involved in every aspect of their social media. One thing I have learned is I teach students English in another country, specifically China. China makes the investment now yes, in their children in the elementary years versus waiting till high school. Here in America, mm -hmm. we're going to start in high school trying to get them in the best college and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. China does in the elementary years, makes the foundation, gets the foundation, makes them, gives them tons of homework from the, gives, gives them the, uh, the parameters, the etiquette, the protocol for education now. Wow. We need to do that. You need to be in K3, K4. I'm going to tell you, when I hit the parking lot at his school, an announcement went out. Miss Grayson is on the yard, huh. is on is on the is on the lot because they knew I was coming in. You better be able to tell me where Blade is and what's going on, and let me see. Involved, that child didn't ask to come here, and I know we are consumed with working and meeting obligations, and we still want to have lives ourselves. But that has to be, it has to work in tandem. The child and the education cannot come secondary. Yes, right. I, I'm tired, but I still get up and I do his work. And now my son is homeschooled. So I'm, I'm responsible for everything. And yes, still trying to keep this house afloat and meet all my obligations, go out and do everything I'm, I do in the community and so forth. That's why you see him in all my videos. <laughs> here and, and working on it. Um, if there's an issue, I have to jump on. I have to take the time to pull his insurance card and say, this is the kind of doctor we need today. Mm -hmm. And I search and I, and I research. Yes, look at these doctor's credentials. And preferably that they look like us. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I, I prefer that they look like us. Um, and then teach your child community. Teach your child to be kind to the neighbors, to care about what the community looks like, because it's your community too. And you start that with teaching them to keep their room clean. <sighs> this your house, you baby. Don't you want it to look nice? Because this house is a reflection on you. Yes, ma'am. Um, it's work. I I don't know. I, I work with my oldest child, but I don't know that I put in the work that I put in with this child. Because I know better now. And when you know better, you do better. Yes, ma'am. As a parent, you have to change from the model that we've always had of us being right and the world revolving around us. Yes, ma'am. My world, to an extent, has to evolve around him. Mm -hmm. His needs and, and, and be the parent that I should have had. That's right. Yes, ma'am. Or the and I think with that, it starts at home. Then you make the, and, and, and it seems to me, if we're going to make the, the sacrifices to put our kids in sports, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, then you make your sacrifice to put them in that script spelling bee. You make the sacrifice to put them on the debate team. Make the sacrifice to put them in these mentorship programs. Get up, drive them to the facility. If you got to wait, you wait. If you can move on, do errands, you can. But you make that investment. My oldest son did a rites of passage program. Yes, ma'am. 
And when this pandemic is over, Blade will do all of that too. I'm going to get him into the mentorship program at the church. We're both going to do the uh, self defense classes because we need those. Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. And then you put your money where your mouth is too. Hmm. If your child, and I'm going to just say this if your child has a PS5 but doesn't have a computer at home, that you own to do their work because that school complete those computers are cheap blades has failed I, I, we had to go to the home computer that he and not my his father we worked together and we bought that computer for that child yes ma'am and so that he could use it. put your money where your mouth is yes ma'am investment you have to invest and that's why the culture of the uh white communities and even the asian culture they put their children we we're we're good for the footballs um and basketballs and track but uh, and the and the child might not even want to play football or basketball or track, but I've noticed that other cultures will they'll test them ballet, they'll test out dancing, they'll test out singing, and then if a child says, "Mommy, I don't like doing that," they'll say, "Sure, okay, no problem. Let's find what you what you like to do." And with doing that, they build character, they build self respect. They did. They building individuality. This is what I want to do. Not because dad was a football player, mom did track. You know, not trying to live through our children. Let them do what they like to do and what they want to do. They can become themselves and be able to grow up and be able to build from that. So that was very important as well. Um, in that, so we want to be able to be more involved. Key, you all. Being involved with our children, being involved with our families, being involved with our communities, this is going to help the missing of our children who are at home who are unhappy. The girls won't run away from home because we're giving them opportunities. We're involved in their life. So that void won't be filled in by some stranger they met online or someone who's talking good to their ear, making their hormones feel a certain type of way. They're, they're occupied mentally. They're learning how to multiply. They're learning reading comprehension. We don't have reading rainbow anymore. We don't have schoolhouse rock anymore. We don't have those things for our children. So we have to take the cell phone for a moment or the iPad and find things to occupy the time and the space. And by doing that, you're helping to build your child, not be distracted by these woes of things that are going on in society. Now they're doing things to help build themselves and we're building self, you build uh, love for self, appreciation for self, and even our parents. And that will keep them mm -hmm. from being sucked in by social media and being sucked in by the music and being sucked in by the, the, the peer pressure of their peers from school or online or whatever. We have to be more involved, you all. That's the only way it's going to stop the bleeding. Dr. Grayson, it's been an honor. I love you so much. I love you. <laughs> We love you. I love you. And we have thank you for while. having. We have a lot of work to do. So get ready, get ready, get ready. And I'll be talking to you very soon. Um, stand by one moment. Thank you all for tuning in to NNV News. Please share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Follow us on social media at NNV News and subscribe to our YouTube channel, National Network View. I am Danielle X, Dr. Pamela Grayson. With National Network View, you all have a wonderful day. Be safe and be strong. Assalamualaikum. Peace. I'm going to call you, Dr. Grayson, okay? Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am.